Hey everyone, today we will take a look at creating mark points with a targeting pod enabling us to quickly ripple 4 JDAMs. When pre-planned targets have moved since departure, creating mark points simply gives us the ability to pick and choose targets based on new intel. It should be noted that the video's ripple procedure can be used for the AGM 154J cell. For this flight, we've assumed the targeting pod is up and running and that you have some basic knowledge of its operation. For more technical training, please see the links in the video description below. As for the loadout, let's verify we have a targeting pod mounted on station 5, Romeo, and 4 JDAMs, 2 on each stations 3 and 7. We are currently over northern Syria, and up ahead is an airfield with a variety of targets. Turn on the autopilot to alt hold and a desired lateral mode. In my case, I'll set steer point. This will allow us to focus on prepping the cockpit for the JDAM attack. Let's power up the JDAMs to begin alignment and set our desired attack settings. ICP air to ground master mode selected. Master arm switch is on the up position. On the right MFD, verify four GB38s are selected. Press OSB7 to power on the JDAM. The alignment will take up to three minutes. The alignment status will begin A10 and eventually count down to a RDY ready state. Because I started airborne for this video, the JDAMs are already fully aligned. At OSB 20, we can select one of four preset profiles. We will stick with profile 1. Verify PRE is selected. On the control page, we can modify the profile settings for the JDAMs. On the left side, change the fuse setting from air to ground and keep the default timing. On the right side, we will keep default settings for the impact angle, azimuth, and velocity. While we wait for JDAM alignment, let's switch our attention to the left MFD and start using the targeting pod. On the left MFD, press the OSB under FCR and select TGP. We should see the TGP pointing at our current steer point. Adjust the brightness and contrast using the corresponding rocker switches located on the lower left and the right of the MFD. Not soy indicates that the left MFD is not the sensor of interest, so press DMS down to make it soy. You'll see the white box around the edges indicating it is now the sensor of interest, along with the not soy message extinguished. Use the expand slash FOB button on your HOTAS or keyboard to adjust wide or narrow field of view. You can also press OSB 3 above wide slash narrow to make that adjustment. Use the radar cursor switch to move the targeting pod aiming reticle. Use the manual range knob to adjust your zoom level as desired. Press OSB 6 or TMS left to adjust the track polarity between TV, black hot, or white hot. You may need to adjust the brightness and contrast again. Once you've located your first target, press the mark button on the ICP. The DED will take you to the mark point page. It is currently showing TGP with asterisks on both sides, indicating that the TGP is the current sensor that will be used to create mark points. Lat, long, and elevation will remain blank until the first mark point is created. Other sensors that can be used to create mark points are the FCR, air to ground radar, the HUD, the helmet mounted device, not yet implemented, and an air to air mode known as overfly. Press TMS up. To create your first mark point. You'll notice the lat, long, and elevation will auto-fill in the DED. Press M-Cell mode select to make it the active steer point, or also known as the SPI, sensor point of interest. The targeting pod will likely lose lock, which is expected. Press cursor 0 CZ to reacquire the lock on the newly created mark point, which is steer point 26. STPT steer point will also be highlighted on the DED, denoting the new active steer point. Move the TGP to select the next three targets while pressing TMS up to create the subsequent mark points. If you make a mistake during this process, just remember that only five mark points can be created. When you create a mark point after number 30, it goes back to 26, overwriting what was previously stored, allowing you to start from the beginning. When you are finished selecting four targets, you should see mark point 29 on the DED. 
Press CZ, cursor zero, to take the targeting pod back to steer point 26, the active steer point, your first created mark point. Select RTN on the ICP. The DED will now display steer point 26, your first target. Use the ICP rocker switch to cycle through steer points 26 to 29, visually identifying the four targets that you intend to engage. Then move it back to steer point 26. When the JDAMs are fully aligned with a ready status, you can begin your attack run. As we approach the target area, be sure to get the azimuth steering line, ASL, as close as possible to the center of the HUD. On the right side of the HUD, you'll see the dynamic launch zone, DLZ, with R max and R min, indicating when you are within desired release parameters. When you're comfortably within the DLZ, Press and hold the weapon release button to release the first JDAM. Press the ICP rocker switch up to steer point 27. Press and hold the weapon release button and press the ICP rocker switch up to steer point 28. Continue doing so until all four JDAMs are released. Break off to the left or right, adjust your targeting pod to see all four targets, and enjoy the fireworks.